wear these or no? Uh, only if you want to be cool. I'll wear them. Yeah. I like hearing the bass. I wear them for the first uh, five minutes. And then we get hot. And then you take them right. off. After an hour and a half, though, I take these off. I can't handle it anymore. Right. My ears get too sensitive. So, Village Idiots. Village That's Idiots. Done. It's, uh, no, we're, we're optimistic. It's, uh, we tend to look at it as we're too busy with our other ventures right now. Mm-hmm. So, we're like, let's just put it. It still lives on the internet. It okay. still has the potential to become something if some weird audience finds it one day. And yeah. But we don't – we're not opposed to starting it again, but right now we're just like, dude, it's too much. I yeah. mean, we, Mike wants to do this more stand-up. I want to keep doing my reels and stand-up. I mean, we're just busy, and we're like yeah. – we, we didn't think it through, so we're like – and it was – we're. And Mike's personality. Yeah, I mean, Mike's a, uh, an absolute um, nightmare to work with. Uh, it's too much. You never know which version of him you're going to get, and I no. just couldn't handle the the roulette, Michael roulette, as they <laughs> called it. Yeah, last when I was on the show, I showed up, and he was just crying, and then he started laughing. It was like up and down, up and down. You know, the irony of the one that you were on is that Remember when I showed up late that episode? Yeah. Four consecutive episodes after that, he showed up late. And remember the attitude he gave me when I showed up late? Yeah. And when he walked in, I go, I could be a dick right now, but I'm not because I know how hard parking is around here. Yeah. And I remember him texting me saying there's no parking, and I quoted him what he said to me, and I, I wrote, and it felt so good to say it. I wrote, figure it out. Yeah. Figure it out, you f- mother effer. Yeah. He he didn't warn me about the parking situation. It's and brutal. So- and so I knew, though, that area is brutal, is horrible. It's absolutely horrible. And you were like, I don't care if my car gets towed. You showed up late. And you're like, ah, it's probably towed. I don't care. Dude, I'm like, wow. OK, that's the anger you go through parking in L.A. <laughs> to the point. That's why they they tow people. It's not because we're dumb. It's because we get so fed up. We're like you re- start doing parking attendant math and you go, there's no way he'll be to this exact spot within a half hour. Yeah. And 90% of the time he is. They're my, elusive. They are. My question is, they're building, like, I don't know how many apartment buildings and little sections. Like, here in NoHo, they're building a whole bunch. In my neighborhood, they are. And I'm like, where's the parking going to go? They don't give a shit anymore. Sorry to swear. They don't care anymore. No, you can swear. You can swear. They, they, I mean, they, like, the new buildings will have parking garages, but by me, I mean, I'm lucky to have a spot. But yeah. it's so hard to even at, like to have it's sad to say to have friends over it's hard <laughs> the, yeah in that area there's no parking wait wait which area do you live in i'm behind the laugh factory on selma so oh my par- god yeah. parallel luckily i know when you live in an area you start to get like i know the little secret spots where there's more lo- times than none parking but it's over this, this no. city my buddy tim he lived near sunset and that guitar center right oh on martell S- yeah mm-hmm. and he lived in kind of near there and it was I've been in LA for maybe like a few months and I was like, Oh cool, I'll go over to my a friend's house. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I literally drove around for thirty minutes and then I called him and was like, Hey man, I'm going back home. I can't. I've find done that before. Home. When I moved out here too, my friends lived at Hollywood and Mar- and Whitley, mm-hmm. like right in the thick and I remember they'd be, they'd be asking, like, Hey, we're pre gaming. We're like it's been forty five minutes and I'm like, I can't find a spot. <laughs> like just pick up the phone angry and then yeah. I would go I'm like, dude, I don't even want to hang out anymore. I'm going home. Yeah. And I've done that like multiple times. This is pre-Uber. I was like, I'm not taking a taxi to your house. I was like, I physically can't come over. I'm done with the city, man. I'm over it. I really am. And I got a question to ask you guys. So there was this exodus of a bunch of comedians, or maybe I am just feel like that because it's more of like the really famous comedians. Right. So did that open up spots at the comedy store and the, the Laugh Factory? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, no? the big guys, it was like more... Uh, embellished than I think what happened. I mean, I think, yeah, you had a handful of, like, the Joe, you have Joe Rogan, Tom Segura, Tim Dillon for a little bit. I mean, Fahim, everybody, a lot of the guys, though, who, like, left, kept their foot on the base, meaning they left their apartments in L.A. So you didn't see, like, these, like, giant permanent moves. Um, and even the guys at my, I don't know many of any, one of my buddies, Joe Marisi, runs a great podcast. Joe Co, check it out. Um, he he actually moved, but he was just sick of L.A. Like, yeah. he was, like, over it. He was, like, you know, he so he moved. I, I, but other people at my level, I don't really know. And when I say my level, I'm just, like, I'm not, I'm not even on a level. But as far as, like, my friends. Uh, and then I know of a couple younger comics, but you're just, like, 
it wasn't enough to like free mm-hmm. it up not that i saw if anything it made people quit and like the whole pandemic made people question comedy and like it's coming back after that long break people were like i don't really like this so people either moved or left but it was not as many moving as you think that's fair i'm happy with it get out yeah. of here get the fuck out of here yeah i didn't mind no i mean all. the traffic was great for a while but no i'm done with la I uh, I can't. Is this the farewell episode? This is the farewell. We're hitting 200 soon. That'll be the official farewell. No, I you just. Should, not to interject, you should have a, a wheel here, and you spin it every episode for the last 20, and whatever city it lands on the most, you have to move there. Oh, my gosh. It's that called, actually wouldn't affect my, my work. It's called Wee Sam's Wheel of Life. Wow. <laughs> it hits Delaware because they rig it. <laughs> <laughs> That would be slightly best, less of a nightmare. The than best that. prank on her is a rig a system where you move. Do you, quiet. Yesterday, I went to the Burbank Hills, and it was quiet. Like some park way deep in there. By you, DeBell? The golf yeah, course? Yeah, actually. I, their Twilight Golf, I don't know if you golf, is phenomenal. They have Twilight Golf? Twilight meaning, which is te- typically after 3 p.m. till it's dark. Oh, yeah, I've done that before. I yeah. love that. I, that was like my move during the pandemic, and I you feel like you're not in L.A. up there. Yeah. Wildlife. I, I thought you meant it was going to be like that bowling, night bowling, where everything's like no. neon, you know, it's glow in the dark. It looks like a rave, but on a yeah. golf course, no. That'd be kind of fun, actually. It's dangerous. We Although, when you go, we do drink, and you're like, I'm going to keep golfing. To the mm-hmm. point where we have our phone flashlights out and we're just listening for sounds that mimic it being on the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> just finding balls. You're like, I think this might be mine. And you hit a rock. I miss that quiet. And I experience that. And it just feels so good just not to hear a car, not to hear anyone else. I mean. It's, it, I don't know. I, I'm, I've been out here like 13, 14 years now. No, no it's a good uh, nostalgic smell of quietness is uh cut grass yes you want to feel like you're at home baby you smell cut grass Dude. you hear a lawnmower in the distance you're like am i in connecticut right now humid like hot summer where are you from connecticut oh connecticut okay yeah. does it get hot up there oh yeah in summer yeah hot and humid as as uh my mom says yeah. it's hot and humid today <laughs> not it's humid it's hot and humid <laughs> does your mom listen to your podcast Oh no! No, okay. She's uh, she's supportive uh, of me with my day job in life. She cares about. She likes my videos. I think stand up. She's not a. She doesn't really get stand up that much. Mm-hmm. So, and that me being the thing I did for the first. I mean, eleven. I've been out here coming up on twelve years. That was the first thing I did. So when she finally saw me, it's a little. Uh, I think abrasive for her. So, yeah. but once I started doing the videos she kind of she's like you should just do the videos and i was like you should just support everything i do but i appreciate yeah. you care i hear the in, the compliment in there but yeah you should- know what i for- forgot to do in the beginning of this just because we we just relaxed into the conversation so naturally i forgot to introduce you don't to the do listeners. it don't do it yeah so if they you won't even care know. about me you'll look me up don't even put my name on the episode. <laughs> just put guy. <laughs> I don't think that would just work. Just put guy. So much detective work could go into this episode. Like we drop little hints, you know? Oh, points where it's don't like even then... tell. Right now, it's none of your business who I am. I oh, think we shit. might do. We, we just put question mark, question mark, question mark. Mm-hmm. Follow him at none of your fucking business. I like that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have we said your name, though? No. Not yet. I'm from Connecticut, though. He's from Connecticut. Okay. We know he does stand-up, if does you're listening. Videos. Don't you hear something creepy, by the way, speaking of clues? Sure. Uh, <laughs> that was weird, but No, no, ahead. no. Speaking of clues, when I first moved to L.A., I remember being at a club one night. It was like a, I think it was Halloween. Made out with this girl. I must have told her I live in Burbank. I do stand-up, and she knew my name. And those are three things she knew about me. Next thing I know, like two days later, I get this long facebook message how she found me and all this stuff and oh. it's just funny how you can find people with minimal clues and social media oh yeah she turned out to be crazy wow. oh, surprising. Oh, she would go to my shows at flappers and just sit in the back by herself to the point where i had to be like can you not do this and she just started crying and i was like why are you making me be mean right now i go you're scaring me oh my god so. was that it was that the end 
Uh, yeah, and it's funny. Like months <laughs> later, she's like, "Who is this?" I'm like, "You text me." Like I have this number in my phone. I'm like, "Shut the fuck up." I go beat it. Wow. Why don't you go haunt some other guy? We had um a fan of a couple of shows here on Adobe Radio who one time just walked in to the radio station and just Oh, what, here? Yeah. How'd they find it? Oh, because, you know, we advertise where we're at and it's pretty easy to find the address of Adobe Radio. No way. Yeah. And they just walked in and I remember Tom goes, Can I help you? <laughs> She's just standing They're like, there. Oh my god. <laughs> Huge fan. You have a shirt you don't even sell of your face. <laughs> no. And there's a part of me that appreciates, obviously, the support, but it's like, don't show up. That's insane. That I mean, you're like, that's not even safe. What are you just wandering in a buildings for? There are a lot of TV show fanatics like that who will sh- stay or find out where they're filming shows and just hang out around hoping to see and take pictures. Like of the it. actors, though. I've seen that where they congregate at like Paramount or is that like like that though? That's less yeah. creepy than wandering into Burbank Boulevard Building Five. No, no. Well, how about this? Just, we Sam, oh, dude. That's every so build. What if that was the eighth building she checked? We Sam. <laughs> just kept going down there until somebody goes, huh? She's like, scurries in. I got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Would you be creeped out if she was hot, though? Yeah, I'd be creeped out. Hotness does not affect me. If you're hot, I don't this care anymore. This is my anymore. impression of if a fan walked in and she's ugly. Hey, hey, get out of here. What are you doing? She's hot. Hey. Oh, you're a fan. Did you have a seat? No. Uh, no. I'm going to get ripped apart. Good thing nobody knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say edgy stuff because nobody can cancel me right now. Just start saying, like, the N-word for no reason. That's after we cut. No, I'm just kidding. I would never say that unless I'm singing a song. No, you would never say that. What if it was? Matt. Oh. People always say, I do it because I'm singing a song. That's every person's excuse. You're like, that, that was, the lyrics weren't in the song, though. That wasn't a word in the song. We had to delete or beep out, bleep out a lot of uh, words from our Guys Night episode a couple times. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, one of Guys my friends. night? What yeah, was that? It was just me and my close friends. We just get really drunk and play a bunch of stupid games and stuff. And you record a podcast? Yeah, yeah. That's it's yeah, it's the We Sam's World, but it's like Guys Night episode. Oh. Yeah, those sound fun though. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. We, we brought in a gimp, I think, uh last time was the gimp. Yeah. Was and it a known gimp or you rented it? No, we uh it, it was a friend. It was a friend who drew dressed up as a gimp outfit and we played the no laughing game. And if anyone laughed or smiled, they'd get punished. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love a good gimp. That could be fun with, uh, you know, some comedian friends, I feel like, trying to make oh, each other I'm laugh. Oh, sure. I mean, that was uh, – not to – just to go back, although they could find out because you said the podcast that I used to be on. Oh, yeah. But speaking of – Yeah. Um, <laughs> we thought we were being all sneaky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Within seconds of like – All idiot. right, guys. You guys found out. It's Michael. Yeah. Hey, Michael and Ochi here. Uh, hate, if- hate the gays. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel me. <laughs> what is, dude, we're putting the name Michael Lenochi for the episode. Please. <laughs> Shit. Um, we, th- we were trying to make uh, Village Idiots podcast that, essentially. Like a hang. Yeah. But that was like a hang if we just met each other that night. I mean, it was just like it was never mm. like that like shoot the shitty thing that we wanted. Uh, there was a lot of – it was just like it felt very clunky always. Yeah. Like where we'd be riffing and – He'd be talking about the podcast, and this guy's not paying attention, even though, or he's not checking the chat, even though he should be. I mean, it was just like kind of like, what the fuck are we doing? So it's a lot of work. It's not just it doesn't rapport, happen naturally. Right? There's rapport is the eighty percent of it, and then the last twenty percent is this. This is why I like my show because it's long form, because it takes sometimes a few minutes, you know, twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, thirty right. minutes to finally like okay. Right. Now we've gotten in the flow of things. Right. And I know when Peyton first came on, like we were trying out different segments. We were trying out different. Th- does this work better? No, we like this. And I, like now I finally feel like we're starting to segment. That's what I always tell people who are starting a podcast and they're like, I'm going to do this segment and then I'm going to do this. I go, just start doing it. I go, everybody has this grandiose 
master plan of a podcast. I go, you're going to do three episodes, and it will be violently different than your first one. Mm-hmm. Just start doing it. See what is natural. Like, even we try doing a segment. And you're like, Here's a segment, and then you're just, it's so weird. You're just yeah. like, just start talking. And, and f- trying something out that another show does doesn't necessarily work for you. It could, but sometimes it works for that show because they have a established fan base already. And their rapport and their personality makes – it's like me doing somebody else's joke. It's mm. like it works because it's they're the vessel that should be doing it, not us doing – I mean, I don't even know what segments are on podcasts anymore. I really don't listen to many podcasts, if I'm being perfectly honest, so I don't know. But I, I can imagine – yeah, I don't know. I, you know. Well, speaking of segments, something we've been doing on the show, which I've been having a blast doing, is we've been cultivating videos on the internet that I would enjoy watching, and usually they involve somebody getting hurt. We some- did that when me and Michael were on it, right? But this is a better version of that. Got it. Because we learned from our mistakes of not just to put up a a, a YouTube video that I okay. found. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. This that was the beta version. It was the beta version. Now we're in the alpha version. Yeah. And now that Michael's not here, I think it's going to go a oh, lot very, smoother. Very smooth, funny tags. Yeah. One of my favorite things Michael's ever said to me during the show is, I thought we were just having a good time. He's like, you interrupted my bit. And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like, Michael, that wasn't a bit. <laughs> I thought we were just, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> He's like, no, I can't. <laughs> I'm like, all right, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a very... That, uh, to... Uh, as squirrely as he can be at times, I will say he's one of the most generous people in comedy, though, as far as helping out. As much as I want to physically hurt him often, he's has helped me more than many people have. And he's quick to make the connections, make the introductions, and then you're mm-hmm. like, this guy's a cool guy. And then you hang out with the one-on-one. You're like, I think I hate you. Yeah. And yeah. then... <laughs> I like how whenever... I came. I think this might have been before you came on the show. I like how blunt he can be sometimes. And he's like, we'll never hang. Like, none of these people. We don't hang out outside of the show. It's true. Yeah. He says the thing that but we all But he says it's so mean. He says the thing we all think in a mean way. Yeah. And it, 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 hate, it hurts to admit it. And then you're like, and then you leave. You're like, I mean, he's right. Oh, he's right. But he says it in the meanest way possible. So I'm There's, like, oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> that guy doesn't like him enough to hang out outside of this room. We're like. Good. <laughs> Good. What? No, I like him. It's cool. I'd hang out with him. His stand-up's great, though. It's very good. Yeah. He's been doing it for a while. I've been asking him, like, when, when's your special coming out? He's like, it takes time. I'm like, okay. I think he was talking about, not to spill his beans, I think he was talking about doing something. Yeah? Well, I, I can't wait to see it. It's t- I mean, lately with, like, COVID, anybody getting a lot of stage time to feel comfortable. Like, a special, people forget a special should be special. A lot of people mm. shoot their hours so prematurely. You're like, what are you doing? Let it be good. People just want to say they're filming a special or uh, they, they kind of go into it like it's this thing. If I just do it, it'll make me better. You're like, no, like run that hour or whatever the hell time you're doing, 30, 20 minutes. So it's so good. It being released to the public will be a good reflection of you and it'll benefit you whatever outlet you put it on youtube or whatever like it should go out there and get more people to come to you so when you do it again you know what i'm saying yeah so my buddy just uh J- jf harris just put one out on all things comedy they're gonna put it on his youtube youtube's crazy it's like that's the way to go now unless you're like gonna get like netflix or something because you put it out the whole hour on YouTube, mm-hmm. and then you. I told him I was like, it's like a branch chart where you have the hour, and then you can break it out into 10, 10 or twenty two to five minute clips for YouTube to suffice their you know their platform, and then you can break it down to upwards of a hundred clips for like Reels and TikTok, etc. So it's like, then you look at that diagram as a whole, and you're like the the reach on that alone is so crazy big mm-hmm. that you it's like you want it be it to be down so funny down to like 15 to 20 second intervals you know what i'm saying and i feel like a lot of people they're shooting it so prematurely like writing comedy is like painting you do the big brush strokes and then you kind of go in with a smaller brush and smaller strokes. people are shooting specials after they're on their third brush in you should be at brushed eight nine ten of the little details so 
every second of it is a potential to make people laugh. And what you see is people not doing that. So I think he, I mean, he, not to speak for him, but I mean, a lot of people, we're not, the COVID, it's so hard to like really run it enough now where we feel like ready to do it. But he's been doing some of the jokes for so long where I think he'll be fine. Yeah. No, I think you nailed it on the head. I saw a special I got about 10, 15 minutes into it before I, I turned watching. it off. They're brutal. It was somebody who shouldn't have shot a special so early. Who was it? I'll is text it, it. Yeah, I don't want to like. He's like a big comic? And he's popular. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know, what platform was it on? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you after. I'll tell you after. So specific, we'll all know. Yeah, Roku, you know you will. Roku Light. I'm like, Bill Burr. You're like Steve's <laughs> podcast? He's the only one or by his Steve special? Um, he walks in. I fucking knew you're here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by the girl. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah. <laughs> Wiping her mouth. She suck his dick. No, no, she, she didn't tell me you were here. I figured it out. I think two of the best stand-ups I've ever seen, and it was literally like watching masters at their craft. Mm-hmm. Like you could tell, like, holy shit. First of all, this person's been doing it for years. <clears throat> and the other person, you're like, has been doing it for a long time. You could tell he's had his hours, maybe not as long as the other one. Mm-hmm. But you're like, he has a natural, the most natural ability I've ever seen was Bill Burr. Yeah. Holy I mean, shit. Yeah, he's great. Have you guys ever seen Bill Burr? I mean, he's incredible. You just go up there, you're like, oh, okay. It's just, you feel, and it's like, when you watch a good stand up, it's like, <laughs> they make it seem so effortless. And then you realize, like, he, you can, like, you can visually see everything. Like, I'm very visual, but like, I can picture his whole joke, and it just makes so much sense. And then you watch somebody who's, a tear down and sometimes there's a little bit of a disconnect. I th- that's what I th- realized. Like comedy is just being clear with your point, which a lot of yeah. younger comics don't do. That's why it's not funny. Cause they can't get the point across. So you can't create the assumption and shatter the assumption in that, but like Bilber, it's so clear. And that's when you get older, you just, you clean up the explanations, you get your point across. You, uh, he's incredible. Yeah. The second guy, Chris D'Elia. And you think, Chris is just different, though. No, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, he's different. He's not right. like them. But I'm saying, like, when I saw him live, I was like, holy shit. Like, it was the most natural ability. I was like, it was so it was like watching a wild stallion on because he was like riffing for the first 10 minutes. And was, then he went into a set and I was right. like, oh, shit. OK, there's the hours he's put in right. with the, those bits. One thing they call I mean, that term, which I typically you can see from like a younger guy who's just funny to like that level. It's just like the polish, as we call it. When you do the road, you just get so polished with your crowd work, your mannerisms. Like, you got to think when you're just like constantly just compressing it Mm -hmm. night after night after night after night, where they have this level of like sheen and polish on them where you're like, it's just that, where there's no fat, there's no extra words, everything they say is funny. Like, when I would feature a lot for this kid and you're just running the same, you're just doing stand up so much every night. You just like your jokes are funny down to like the like everything about your set is so rehearsed and planned. Not that that's what they were doing, but you just get this like sheen on you of like you just go on stage and you're like, I know exactly what to say because you've seen every scenario. Yeah. Like when people are like, he's good at crowd work. I'm like, he's done so much stand up. He's seen this scenario a billion times. What he's saying right now, he probably said a version of that 50 plus times. Yeah. So, I mean, very, self, very. You know, every now and then you'll get this wacky thing that like never happened. But if that's the case, it's so wild that a comic is, you know, what's that? What's that one comic? I don't know. His name's escaping me. I started following him on Instagram because of his crowd work was just incredible. Um, he's from New York. He has that show. Uh, oh, God. He gets. Oh, damn it. Uh, if I find it, I'll pull it up. He's from New York. Yeah. He's Sam Burrell? What's that? Sam Burrell does a lot of that. No, um, he started doing those things where you turn the phone over. Oh, during... Andrew Schultz. Andrew Schultz. Yeah, 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 yeah. His crowd work is really good. He was one of the, I mean, yeah, it's crowd work. You know, I, I like crowd work clips. If they're done well, I do like his. I think some people you can get away with a uh... crowd work, though. It's it's good as a clip because it's so engaging. Yeah, I've, I've realized when you post a joke the thing you've been working on for so long and it gets a good laugh you see crowd work clips do better because on the, at the end of the day the internet wants to see audience retention and with a joke sometimes if they laugh a lot up top they've you almost satisfy what they wanted and they scroll mm. crowd work clips are 
they're so engaging because it's a conversation the way people watch this the way people watch anything where they want to see what happens at the end of the conversation so crowd work clips crush online i mean like they do substantially better than than pre-written jokes you see yeah. it constantly but he he was like one of the first guys to really like take advantage of doing crowd work clips and i mean now that's like i see comics just popping off because of that stuff yeah it's crazy i love seeing uh, hecklers get destroyed by comics too heckler gets destroyed steve hofstetter that's his whole like shtick you know steve hofstetter yeah i know what you're talking about heckler gets destroyed the guy's just ordering, ordering a burger he's like what the fuck you say nerd and he's like i just getting a cheeseburger he's like yeah i bet you are you fucking idiot he puts like fire on it you're like the guy was just eating food as i love when I, you see a lot of comics are so scared that they, they misinterpret kindness, where the guy's like, no, I was just saying you're funny. He's like, the fuck you say? And they, <laughs> you just see them panicking. Yeah. Really? You, yeah, you fucking idiot? This guy's an idiot. And the guy's like, I'm complimenting you. He's just like so terrified. I've he, never seen that before. I see it a lot in like younger comics where they're so Ooh. thrown off because they're already scared to be up there. They just come back with pure, pure <laughs> hatred on the person. The guy's like, woo! And he's like, you said fuck. And they just attack him. Funny. I liked our Ari's like Comedy Central thing where it's, this is not happening. Oh yeah, the story show. Oh, some of those were great. They're very funny. Yeah. Jeff Dye was on one. My Kelsey Coach, she had a funny one. Joey, I don't Diaz. have any story. That's funny you said that because like I always think they have like such funny stories, and I try to think like I don't have funny story. I do when I'm not trying to think about it and I'm with my friends. Right. But if you were like right now, tell me a funny story. I don't know. I guess I have like two. But it wouldn't be like that show. I'm always curious if that's a bit they yeah. do or if that's generally just a story they tell. I usually have things that happen to me that I don't know. They wouldn't be considered stories. Just the weirdest fucking interactions with people. Literally yesterday, I'm buying cat food. Lady picks up one of the cat food bags and goes, mm -hmm. is this cat food? And I go, yeah. And then she goes, oh, that's weird. And I'm like, why is it weird? What? It says cat food. Why? Okay. Now I've got this like weird interaction. I like I'm trying to ex like why now I'm thinking about this constantly. Like why did you have to say that? What did you say? What, how to end? I went yeah, okay. She's like okay great. And I'm like what the fuck? like in my mind I'm like what did she did she eat this before and think it wasn't cat food? I don't know. What a dumb fucking bitch. <laughs> weirdos. I mean just weirdos. And they want women everywhere. to be president. And this lady. <laughs> Michael, don't come on, man. Come on, Michael. If people are taking me serious right now, they can lick my... You can lick my cat food. Yeah. Hey, how about that guy who decided to mess around with Mike Tyson? You oh, he got... Clip? Oh, I, uh, it's funny. I just read how the guy has a criminal history. Yep, huge felon. And he's pressing charges on Mike Tyson, so that's fun. I mean, that is the shit the internet. I mean, it's a big deal. What was he on a flight? Yeah, he just kept harassing them. Apparently, he threw a water bottle at him. Then Mike finally snapped. Did he beat the shit out of him? Um, yeah, I feel like he got a few good hits, yeah. but it wasn't like he was just like Ugh. the guy's still... not like <laughs> it, it, a few like uh, bumps on the head and like there were a couple scratches, like, no. but it's not like yeah, he just bloodied on the curb him. or something. Yeah. He yeah. was getting held back. Mike Tyson was being held back yes. by a dude, and it was on a flight. It was on a flight. It was hard. What flight? Air? What airline? JetBlue. That was a good airline. It can be. Why was it Mike Tyson first class or he was? It was. It oh, was in was. the first class. So when the guy was boarding, he must have been talking shit? No, he was right behind him. Oh, so this felon was in first class. Yeah, yeah. How's he that's getting where, there? That's where all the felons go. Yeah. Jet blue first class. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sir, we're going to upgrade you because you're scaring everyone back here. <laughs> um, wow. Zeke. So we, uh, Zeke is responsible for cultivating the videos. I'm excited to see this week's video, Zeke. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited too. Let's uh, let's see him. Last week we had a we had only one video we had to take out, that. so that was good. What do you mean take out? It was way too offensive. Oh wow! Yeah, way too offensive. Where are you finding these videos? Um, he is uh, just scourging the internet. And this Find is something you think he'll like. Yeah. I mean, I try to curate them to to either piss we Sam off or to your pervy make bosses. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your perv your perverted um, host uh likings i found this for you do you like it it's just a <laughs> he's like no <laughs> get back in the room yeah okay um so are we ready yeah we're ready well here so we sound, know right? nothing about this yeah i mean they're just random videos that i yeah. found and if they're bad do we hit you or yeah yeah you can do that um nice. 
This one is one of my all-time favorite videos that I found on the internet. Cool. Can we go full screen? Uh, yeah. Let's see. This one? Uh, Zeke Peak, left, is it called? Oh. Hmm? Is this segment called Zeke Peak? Zeke's, uh, I Zeke's. just named it that. <laughs> I went on my own. This is as good as it's going to be. You've said that with a girl before when you're about to pull your penis (laughs) out. You want a Zeke peek? She's like, no. You want a peek at Zeke? (laughs) I hate that you're laughing that hard at that. Because he's true. He's probably done it. um, It's just him in high school. (laughs) Oh, the space bar will do it, too. I knew him in high school. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All right, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Are you all right? Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. It was this damn ass rock. Ow, my Don't you just my left butt she just your left ass cheek. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to fall. I didn't it. break any bones. It just... Goody. Uh, that's a good bail on film. This is though. the most child interaction I have ever heard, though. He's you too young to be talking like that. Got- I. I mean, she's too old to be talking like that. Yeah, I know. Well, it's like you didn't want to fall. You're like, a, yeah. Dumbass. It's like he rock. just learned how to curse, and he's like trying to throw in curse words. You know. He cried within seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough, you're bored. See the skid mark he made with the rock. <laughs> and then here's the damn ass fucking gay damn ass rock. The damn uh. ass gay damn fucking rock <laughs> is what I believe we just heard. This damn ass fucking gay damn ass rock. You bit and pee on it? No, I want I want to live. You can live, but do you want to keep the rock and pee on it? I mean, is he autistic? Oh, wait, oh. No. Oh, oh, it's right here. Okay. You want to do something gay to the rock, like pee on it? Is that rock? Yeah. <laughs> do something gay to the rock. Have a good bail on it, huh? Do something gay to that rock. Okay. Nature? <laughs> Will you please stop videotaping me? Okay. Video cuts. One kid was substantially more self aware than the other. Yeah. yeah. Like definitely. just talking to this like kid who sounded like a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. Didn't fall. <laughs> do you like, do something gay to the rock like pee on it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the, one of the most insane things I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how to process that, man. Yeah, well, Next one. I got a out Do of something you. gay to the rock. <laughs> I'm going to say that to my friends when I'm drinking and it's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see the next one. Okay, right, on to the next one. Anyone fall? That's not where the cards go. That doesn't mean that's not where the cards go. I get what you're saying, but. But. Oh, Publix. It's Florida. <gasps> you don't care? Uh, the cards are my life. Madam. <laughs> now, I will if you take your card back. Would you like to do that for me? Back the fuck off! You started that with your card, ma'am. All I did was I ask you. But, ma'am, what you doing? Leave me the fuck alone! What? I need it! What about the cards? I don't give dudes! They fucking pay people! I told you Leave the analogy. Do you throw trash on the ground? Do they pay people to pick that up, too? No, they don't pay people to pick it up! Then what are garbage men for? What's going on here? Get the fuck away from me! What are you doing in your car? Yeah, I'm gonna fucking hurt you in two seconds. That's against the law, ma'am. Oh, the horror. No, I can hurt. Oh, Please bring up. Guy is a menace. Oh my! This guy is a menace. Yeah, fuck that he guy. Sounds, he sounds like Ben Shapiro if Ben Shapiro like didn't become a political person. Oh, you know. <laughs> that kid is a dick, yeah, dude. But like, yeah, he's harassed. being so. Uh, I want to see the video where he just gets like, his her, ass beat. Her reaction is warranted. Like, I love that she got pissed. It was just, I mean, it was a it was a magnet. On. Yeah, you put a yeah. magnet on her car. There's several people who do that. They have, like, magnets and stickers that they'll put on people's car if they don't uh, put their shopping cart back in the I would love to just drive away and have a magnet. I know. You get free magnet? <laughs> oh, my God. I want to find that kid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the next one, man. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Our sex life is amazing. Next 
<laughs> oh, I know this couple. Oh. Uh. I'm 24 years old. At the age of 23. Ew, bro. This is my wife. This is my life. Bro, I'm done. God 61 bless them. and 24. Yeah, good for them. They're both mentally ill. Uh, Who's winning in that in that thing, though? I mean, obviously, I think she's pulling a younger person. Yeah. I mean, it's winning. not like he's getting anything out of her. I mean, maybe people her are into that. Yeah. yeah. You know. They have an OnlyFans. OnlyFans. Oh, good for them. Yeah. They do? So yeah. How do you know about that? Yeah. Are yeah, you yeah. subscribed? Yeah, we who subscribe. Does? Big they fan. do. They do. Yeah, I'm Don't subscribed. Don't you remember? That we is. I, would, I, I legit they are. would subs subscribe to that just to see, like, just out of curiosity. I don't find it's older women like that. Like, that, like, <laughs> they're, like, you know, like, the, oh, you got, oh, MILFs, this, any other. That <laughs> peaks at, like, 44, yeah, 45 for me. Because when you start creeping up, I go, I, in my head, I'm like, that could be like my mom's friend. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, you're, and then I'm also thinking, I'm like, you're somebody's mom. Wait, did you hear the way he said, yeah? He goes, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. My mom's friend. No. You're I think we're all secretly uh, subscribed. To we're all secretly subscribed. We all just want to point the finger yeah. at the other person and go, you see the way he said that right now, bro? We quote something from the OnlyFans by accident. I didn't see them eat steak the other day. Yeah, the third post was crazy. Right? Yeah, what the fuck was that? I'm drooling. <laughs> <laughs> Why? This is on purpose? This is guys night. <laughs> guys night. <laughs> Literally something that they do in a uh, foreign country where you have to go get the beer case you get the beer case, you get to keep it and get smacked by clowns. Wow. What country? I don't I don't know, I can't tell. Ecuador. I felt Ecuador. <laughs> We used to do First something like experience? that in high school football when there was like our showers were like, you know, it would go in mm -hmm. and we would leave the back shower open for an underclassman and then they would we'd smack them on the way in. So, and oh. then you get to keep the shower. Oh, God. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> the creepiest thing yeah, you've dude. ever said. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was so creepy the way you said you that. Keep the <laughs> shower. Keep the shower. Then we'd suck his dick. <laughs> You heard it from Michael Linochi here. You just got hazed, and the kid's like, I think you guys just suck my cock. We just <laughs> hazed the shit out of him. You just got so, so hazed. We, bring, don't, we don't have an advertiser this week, do we? Bring the rock uh, in. This isn't the week of the 18th. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, we're, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Bring the rock in. Make we're going to do some gay stuff to the rock. <laughs> it's sponsored by. Oh, Better God. help. Gay <laughs> With the rock. Please. Okay. So, all right, let's keep let's, it, let's keep going. it going. I've got a couple more. I am very happy that I spent my childhood with more adults than I did with kids my own age because I was picking up more things from adults than I were from kids my own age. Mm -hmm. And I look and I, I go around sometimes and I hang out with other people that are my age and they're just kind of Brutal. Oh, so uh, I got years. cringe chills. Oh. What a what an old soul. So wise. Can we just talk about the socioeconomic God. policies? Of, <laughs> like, oh. That is an LA kid to <laughs> a T. Yeah. What it's it, it really the whole Will Smith incident really shed a light on how celebrities really do live in a different world and reality. Mm -hmm. I mean they they can do no wrong when you have yes men around you. You're rich. Uh, that's a, that like, if my son said that, I'd be like, "What are you talking yeah. about?" I'd be like, "That's exactly why you need to be with kids your age, exactly. you psychopath." Exactly. When I was your age, I was skating with my friends, you and know, falling. saying gay ass rock. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it's like the way he said, like, "Oh, that's like so." I'm so above that. That's the part that's like you're like, uh, dude. Yeah, I'm like, you're gonna be 35 one day, and then you're gonna realize you didn't hang out with kids your age, and then you're gonna start hanging out with kids too young for you. <laughs> Because you <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. Isn't that why Michael Jackson yeah. was a pervert? Because he didn't hang out with kids his age? Exactly. Right? And he wanted to have sleepovers because I mean, he never had a sleepover. The Smith, whatever, the Pinkett Smiths are just bizarre. You never had a sleepover uh, either, we said. Actually, I didn't, no. Yeah. You yeah. never had a sleepover? Uh, I think I had maybe like one or two growing up, and that was it. Like you never had them at your house, or you never participated in. Oh, a I've never sleepover. participated in another person's sleepover. They came over maybe like once or twice to my house, uh, but my parents were always scared. Like you know, really, yeah, stuff. So scared what of what? Uh, you know, being molested. I don't know. Yeah. 
of you going to someone's <laughs> house and getting molested? Jeez. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Me and Daniel used to have to lie to have sleepovers with each other. That's his little brother. Okay. <laughs> that sounds, Sorry. That, 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 sounds, that sounds romantic. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Not romantic. Hey, man. What? First of all. Second of all, don't say stuff like that on air. Yeah. Me and Never Daniel mind. would lie to sleep. Yeah, I would. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, house. mom, I'm sleeping at Zeke's house. And then your, your brother's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to Daniel. And then they meet at a tree. <laughs> or a motel. Like, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> yeah, you guys met at a motel. Or no, a motel. no, no, no. There's nothing. How like close that. were your sleeping bags together? Yeah, no. We should probably one. I feel like something done. happened and no. you're just making a joke about no, it. No, I'm not. <laughs> We anyway, would do, we would do okay. sleepovers all. The, I mean, not all the time, but like, it was more of like, yeah. I mean, it was harmless. You play video games all night. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm immigrant parents. You play remember. video games. Yeah. They make food. You touch his dad's dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a sleepover, baby. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> That's what sleepover is all about. You learn about adulthood. <laughs> you talk about politics. <laughs> I just spit. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> Did you go? It's all right. <laughs> It's all right. Oh, uh, yeah. next one. <clears throat> I think this is the last one. Last one? Great. Oh, no, no, no. There's one more after this. Right. Oh, I've seen this. You have I was rejected from being a dancer. What? Yes! So cringe. Oh. So he auditioned to be a dancer and then showed up and showed off his skills. That's it's, somebody who's probably gonna like. You're like stormtroopers don't do backflips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope it's a bit. They're just kind of. I hope that was a bit. I, it didn't look like. I know, but I'm didn't. just. I'm gonna hope. By the mannerisms, it didn't. It looked like it was very serious. Yeah. Yeah. That seems like somebody who's really entitled. I would never show up to something I didn't do. I didn't make. I do that to every like. Remember the kid who did shoot. <laughs> you, you do every TV shoot. You go there and do backflip. Yeah, and I'm like, go, oh. <laughs> I guess you wish pointing. you would cast me now. And they're like, who are you? All the directors are like, yo, don't book Wee Sam. He comes with backflips on your set. Yeah. Uh, that's like the kid in high school who would be the um, – he wouldn't make the basketball team, then he'd be the manager. Mm. He would say, well, imagine that guy just dancing. Right? He seems a very uh, aggressive. There's something, like, dark about him. He seems he something. Yeah. yeah. He seems something. What's next? What's the this last one? The last one. This one is my favorite, and I think you're really going to like it. Okay. This is definitely a PA on set um, <laughs> that's, like, fucking around. Okay. I can't wait. We need more like that. I know. Hold on. Can we just watch that one again? It's so good. I love the direct eye contact she makes with the camera. And it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> she looked in the camera for help. Oh, my God. That was good. Yeah. That was good. Uh, she got messed I, up. Why, why do I love watching people get hurt like that? It's a fun thing. When they don't get hurt, it's fun. Well, I kind of like it when they get hurt. What is the one? I like seeing people when the, I've Googled many of times or YouTube many times. Um, people falling on prices, right? Oh, that's great. Ah, <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Woo! Woo! <laughs> that's a good one. What are some fails? I've been big into the cringe stuff, which is like – they're not always funny, but when there's a good cringe video, yeah, some of them are just like creepy. Mm. Like, uh, you know what's a really funny cringe thing is you ever see on TLC when they had the love at first kiss? Yes, I mean that's perfect. The guy who, the one guy oh. who's like viral for it. I wonder what he's up to now. I think he has a, a wife. Really? Yeah, I looked it up recently. He got married. Holy crap! And now they're just free. good for him. Now they're just freaks. They do stuff. I like the cringe videos of the people reenacting, like, they pretend they're a Power Ranger, and they're like, Morphin Time! And then they have the belt. And it's, like, all, like, super expensive quality. Yeah. 
I saw then, one of the girls. She's a she tells you she's a Ninja Turtle. She's probably spent like twenty grand on Ninja Turtle stuff. Yes. She's like thirty eight. Lives at home. Hey, pizza. You're like, ah, oh, shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> oh my hey, God. Pizza. And she took like karate up to like a legit. And then her brother's just like yeah, looking in the camera, like, yeah, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea what she's doing, but your TikTok stuff is doing well. It's good. I mean, it's uh, it's definitely a grind, dude. Coming up with the ideas is not. It's a good exercise of like trying to not care and just pump out ideas. But thank you, first off. I hate when people compliment me, compliment me and I go right into bitching. But thank you. No, it is a bitch and it is a grind. I can, That's why I'm saying good job because thank I you. can't like to continuously, consistently with like the quality you're putting them out on. It's okay. not easy, man. It's tough. I mean, it, you just hit a. Yeah, it's t- the, the hardest part lately, I'll be perfectly honest, is trying not to see the success of other people, especially when they steal my ideas. And they're, the, people will take my ideas, act them out verbatim, and like big TikTok accounts, and theirs will go viral. I mean, like, like viral because they're huge. And it's just like you have to just watch your creation. Just it like, drives me crazy. And you can't do anything about and it. And people in the comments you? are like, that's just how TikTok works. You cannot that's do so anything. Cool. I'm going to show you. I screenshot one of the guys. He has 15 million subscribers. Mm-hmm. And he act. I did one about girls watching a horror movie. And she's like, <laughs> and then it goes, and then it cuts to girls watching a murder documentary. And she's just like, <laughs> like all creepy and mm-hmm. shit. And literally hundreds of people st- stole it. And they're all theirs. I swear to God, like clockwork went better than mine. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah. And it's shitty because I tell, like, my buddy's pretty big on, or he does TikToks as well. This girl stole my stuff before she has 410,000. She stole my stuff, 800,000. Oh, she follows me. I block them too because I'm like, dude, I'm not going to just be your yeah. grocery store of ideas. Yeah. And then this 15.8 million piece of shit. But, uh, can I see his name? Yeah, of course. You should dock. Uh, the, no, and, and, <laughs> hold on. No, no, no. No, and this should, guy, and this is the he. See, so I, I, I talked about on my podcast. These people, they get a lot of followers because what they do, and I use the metaphor. I'm like a small town farmer, and the things I grow, sometimes oh, are sweet. are great. Sometimes they're they rot, and some should just stay in the ground. But every now and then, I get my prize pumpkin that is, you know, great, and people want to come see it. And I'm like my own little store. And then you got these people that go from farm to farm of these original creators and just pick the best ideas from everybody. So his page is just bangers from other people's pages. Like, I'll be honest. Thank you for the compliment earlier. But, like, realistically, like, as far as performance speaking, I mean, one out of every 15 do really well. And that's, like, being modest. His He's going around and picking that one from everybody's page. And then meme accounts share him sharing doing my idea it's just this messed up thing and it's shitty because if my numbers grew a hundred percent or whatever like right. even like a fraction of like a, 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 a such a fraction of what he has my career as a comedian would be like one million percent different so it's insane where i'm doing the things that these big accounts steal they're reaping the benefits and i'm just sitting here just like like cra- like scratching and crawling for making ideas and getting followers. So I'm trying to like enjoy it and just pump out ideas and not pay attention to that. But it's a very mental, mental game. Well, if it makes you feel any better in terms of level of skill, what he's doing takes zero. 100. Sp- they're they're and, worthless. Right. And so even him producing it, all this stuff, he's not even developing his own creative skill or artistry right right and you on the other hand you're not like getting weaker by any means right 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 so you're just getting better and better and better so when the time comes for you to really blow up boom you've already established like this great foundational right part of you that creates these things while this guy he's just worthless he better hope he can just keep stealing tiktok is his peak Right. That's where it's going to be. And that's so – like he won't gr- – like there is no growing for him after that. Right, right, right. Because he's always going to have to chase the people like me stuff, which it's like right. good. It's just like – and my I've had I've had peers take my ideas before, like friends like rip shit off. And I'm like – I've been like, what are you doing, man? It's like I, I'm happy you're making your own stuff, but it's like, bro, you're just doing – like a few – like he did my idea verbatim. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But 
What, did, you, did you confront him? Yeah, and he, uh, you get every excuse under the sun and this and the other. And um, But anyways, the frustrating part, though, is that guy still makes so much money. Yeah. But it's like, you know what, I don't yeah, it's not even. But th- that's it. That lifespan is not a long-term lifespan. Let's be real here. And I always look at it like this. When it comes to finding out if he's the creative or not, he'll never get anything. And I guarantee, I feel like if they were to rise up at any way, I will cross paths with some of these people. Like you damn well know one way or the other, whether, I don't know what the circumstance, I guarantee I'll see them and them doing that will not be helpful for them. With no. it. So, but it's just tough now because it is such a grind to get followers. Man, I post stuff, dude, and it's like, <clears throat> it, I'll lose followers. I like constantly. You're just, it's just, it looks like a stock chart of just like, but it's fun though. I like it. It's just like, it's good. It sucks though because it's take, I, I kind of like decided like, I'm just going to, I'm quitting my job soon. Um, and I'm going to just, I have like a year's worth of money. Like if I don't make mm-hmm. anything, luckily I've been getting a lot of brand deals lately, which has been crazy. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, they're insane. I'm doing my third one. I just got asked to do my third one yesterday. Uh, I did one for Sip Caddy. It's like a koozie for your shower. I did, yeah. I'm doing one for that mud water. You know, you ever see those ads? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing one for them. And then this um, pre-made alcohol company hit me up yesterday. So I'm making money doing it now, which is great. But uh, what I told myself, I want to quit my job. And if I can spend like a year like hit, almost doing – I still want to write my stand up and do that, but if I really hit it hard doing those videos, then go back to stand up where I can really sell tickets. Like I can headline, I headline now, and I sell tickets. It's great, but it's not as much as I'd like. But I'm like, dude, if I just hit it hard for a year and get to the numbers of like some of these people, I'll sell out, and then I can pull back on the videos a little bit and really refocus on stand up. And then I'm like, I'm like triple jumping the, right. the whole process. So. That's great. That's man. kind of the goal right now, dude. Don't stop. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, and the fluctuating numbers thing. Uh, sorry, how are we on time? Oh, you're good. It's like three more minutes. So our numbers fluctuate as well here on the show. Right. And I mean, some episodes, like on the YouTube, won't do great, and then some will do great. Mm-hmm. Some Spotify numbers will do great. Some won't. But that's not indicative of the quality of the show. It's hard to tell yourself that, but it's good that you know you're conscious of that. Absolutely. Like, like this show wasn't so great, but the, the ones before him are getting much better, you know? Do gay things to The Rock. <laughs> there you go. The Rock being, I'm going to have underwear, it just says The Rock. <laughs> I'm The Rock. That was one of the most <laughs> insane things that I've ever heard somebody say. From a child, too. But no, the, the, the hustle and grind like you're talking about mm-hmm. is one of the hardest things to do not because of sometimes it's not even hard the actual doing of it it's the mental games that you play with yourself after seeing numbers on one oh thing and God. you're like okay we suck now or the comments which by the way i can't wait till we have professor dave on the show because I checked our comments on the uh, Flat Earth uh, video that we had, and uh, some of the sane people of the world are beginning to comment on them. So it makes us feel a little bit better here that we're not the crazy ones. <laughs> but no. Oh, we're out of time here on IW Radio, but don't worry. The show continues on. Make sure you uh, follow us on YouTube, subscribe to us, and then uh, we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts tomorrow morning. Check us out there. Um, thanks for listening. So thanks. It's like one negative comment, one little thing, one low numbers really can put you down. Oh, and, dude, and make you question because it's a lot of like I've I've invested thousands and thousands of dollars into the show. You know what yeah, I mean? It's uh, you swing one. Uh, it's a very drastic swing of when one does really well, you're like, I got this. Mm-hmm. Nothing will ever go wrong. And then you have a video or whatever episode, and you're like. Am I the crazy guy? Am I delusional right now? Am, am I, I just? Am I in the down slope? Did I peak like two months ago? And I'm just the guy being like, he's still doing that. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Am I just another person with a podcast? Yeah, you gotta just barrel through that. I mean, at the end of the day, if you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, it's gonna. And it's funny because I do a lot of research of. I mean, I don't know if you look at other people's podcasts around your same level, but I look at like creators uh, that do. Not similar what I, what I do, but like people that are 
growing and stuff, it's just hammering them out and not even paying attention. Like I know accounts like my buddy's wife, she's great. She's a big TikToker, but she's like, as far as like the amount of followers she has, like her engagement's not great. Like, but what I, she does do is just consistently put them out every week, three a week. This just doesn't let up. And those are the counts that you start to see the algorithm just start to slowly. And then they're more likely to have videos pop off versus me where I'll be good for two months or a month or a month and a half. And then I get pissed off and disappear for two weeks and the algorithm will just like reset. Mm. And then you're like crawling again. Yeah. So I never get to the point where I'm four months in and just hammering away. And I think that's the big difference. Well, I mean, the text message I sent you yesterday, I didn't even realize we've been monetizing as much as we had been on YouTube. Really? Because I never got an email. <laughs> so I was like, oh, so you, you, you're on AdSense. Wow. And so it's not, it's not a crazy amount, but I was just like, we saw our subscribership growing every month and our listenership growing. And we were like, cool. It's not like huge numbers. Again, it's like what you're saying slow, but then all of a sudden I'm like, Hey, Peyton, you've got a, you've got a little bit of a cut coming in. Apparently that I didn't even know I was getting. Dude, I mean, that that but stuff creeps up. Yeah. But it makes sense because we've been doing them. I mean, I think we've only missed a handful of weeks since we've started the show. Consistency. I, I talked to somebody at so Instagram that once, but every piece of advice I've ever heard with any sort of social or posting type thing is just be consistent. Yeah. Because the second you'd go away, you lose people. Like, it takes a month for people like, oh, he come, oh new thing. Oh, like – when I'm random, they're never knowing, you know, people don't know to go back, but, uh, yeah. dude, man, my buddy does YouTube and he had a couple of videos pop off. He has like 50,000 ish subscribers. How oh, good for him. Um, it's just, I mean, he's been doing it forever and he hammers away. I mean, he made like hundreds of thousands of dollars just from these, like the ads and stuff just like ramps up. Like it's insane when the views start going. I mean, I, I haven't looked at this page in a minute, but you just hear the numbers. You're like, Jesus Christ. It's like, yeah. it's, that's cr- I've been trying to do the YouTube shorts, which uh, they're like, I'll get either three views or 2000. I mean, it's so random, but um, it's worth doing the the yeah. shorts and stuff. Well, uh, Peyton has a dead by daylight uh, opinion yeah. page on YouTube, which has been doing good, right? Still yeah. going? I, definitely spot on on the shorts thing. It's random. Like I uploaded one today. And like it, it, it's at a hundred. But I upload one last week, and within like the first hour, it's already at a thousand. It's d- it's, it's it doesn't completely make it. random. They flip a coin. I think. I think there's one guy in the back who flips a coin. I mean, I'm I'm actively taking my best of my best videos from my Instagram and TikTok is the same thing, and putting them out there too. And it's like it is random. Where mm. I'm not trying to be conceited, but I'm like this video on everything I've ever posted on does well, and then on here it gets four views you're like what like yeah. but what i notice nine times out of ten is when i post my stand-up clips on that they do they do they're the best thing on my youtube which is kind of crazy because i've when i post my stand-up on my instagram people are just like nope i don't give a crap about that that's so interesting it's frustrating but it, you know at some point i need to just get over it it's just it's shitty when you post something and it gets upwards of 80 to 100,000 on reels and then you post your stand up and it's like 28. You're like what the fuck? Like Jesus Christ. And you're like then you it goes back to the whole you see the number you're like am I bad at stand up? Like cuz you hear the crowd go like then you go to these shows you like the shows go good and then you take a clip from it put it online and you think I put up me just pointing at the camera saying go fuck yourself. Yeah. The way the reaction it's like I don't know. I think keeping the mindset with every single one you do, you're going to get a little bit better. Right. I think that's the most important thing. Like if you learn something new or you're like, I actually got a little bit better doing this or, oh, I learned from this mistake. Right. I think that's the most important thing with the consistency as well. I agree. I think what I try like, to do is like editing. I would try to say like, what can I, what else can I do? Like right. what's a new Google, YouTube, something, how to, a tutorial on Premiere. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it gets to the point where I'm like, I just want to do a simple one, but yeah. I try to make it a point to level up the editing because I guess one thing I was like, okay, if you're going to steal from me, you you better know how to edit. Yeah. So, but they always take the easy ones. That's the bullshit. When the second I do a simple, easy, bing, bang, boom, people steal that, but you don't see people stealing when I'm pretending to be a spider. That's such a, <laughs> that's such a inconsiderate and what a shitty way of living and, and making your money. 
Oh, you, you know, know what you, I mean? You know what you're that, doing. They know exactly what they're doing, yeah. but they justified. I have a girl who runs a meme account. <laughs> so I love how heated you are on this. Oh, dude, I, I you, I'm being at a one when I, every time I talk about this, I'm a ten because it really pisses me off. And I, this one girl who runs a meme account, said to me, she was like, "I'm gonna start doing my own and post it on my thing and blah blah blah." And I was like, oh, "Okay, like, what are you trying to? How many? Uh, uh, how how often are you trying to post?" She's like, "Thinking like one a day or two. And I'm like. I go, I do two a week, and that's hard. I go, just FYI, I go, she's like, well, I have a backlog, but she's like, it, it's fine. I can just steal them from meme accounts. I go, the meme accounts steal them from us, you dumbass. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. I didn't write back yet because I was so pissed off, but I want to be like, hey, dumbass, how about you? Why don't you be like, strive to be creative and try? And one thing people don't realize that, like, I pushed back on someone before. My girl commented on the guy who stole my thing, and he's like, the idea has been done before. It's like, you did nothing for this. I go, I thought of the idea. I thought of the angle to shoot. I thought of what to say. I thought of how to edit it together. I thought of the music. I put the music together. I go, you literally took it like it's a goddamn baton at the end of the race and then did it. Don't fucking come at me like it's an idea that's been done. I go, first off, it wasn't. Secondly, kill yourself on reels, and then I will and then I'll reenact it. Oh, my God. And I go, death to all Steelers, not the football team. <laughs> not the football team. <laughs> so you actually message these guys who are stealing it. I really typically don't. My, I, every now and then I'll kind of get snarky and be like, like my cousin tagged me in a video of this girl doing one of my videos. She's like, she used your audio. And I'm like, and I wrote, and she used the whole idea. <laughs> like, like, what do you... But it's like it kind of gets petty after a while, and it happens so much. If I did it to like, mm. if I attacked everybody, you're just like, it's so funny. You just look, you look like an idiot doing it. And it's just like, what am, what am I getting out of calling them out? That's the frustrating part, you know. But it's just like every now and then I'm just like, oh motherfucker, because when you see it's a big, it's it's it, you know, there's a hypo- hypocrisy of when it's a smaller account and they do it. I'm like, hey, good job, funny. And then when it's a big account, I'm like, you can die. That's how I feel about the Paul brothers and everything they do. Dude, a lot of these, a lot of these like big social media people, very few, but a lot of them did come up with this, uh, they call it being inspired by culture or they're all just doing, very few of them are actually doing genuine unique ideas I, th- I would say that maybe logan paul they would do the vlog so at least they're trying but they're, jake, they're, uh, they're a lot jake uh paul posted something because of the mike tyson thing today which was just astounding just uh, just because well, he's, he's a professional boxer well right um but he said uh if somebody is harassing you like this in public you should have the right to absolutely beat the shit out of them with no repercussion and i'm like most of your videos you did when you were younger was harassing people oh really oh yeah i don't i never i could never even muster up the strength to even click play on one of his videos i saw he was like a rapper and i'm like this kid's the worst i don't get it man i don't get it and i hate when people compliment them like they're good businessmen they're good business. i'm like but what about their character okay what about their character would you want your kid to be like them that's the real question that's like going to somebody who runs a sweatshop and they're like, he's a pretty good businessman. You're like, there's kids in there. Right. Yeah, but he's making money doing good. He's making, <laughs> he's doing a business good. What? The Drives fu- me crazy. The Drives fuck me crazy. What are you talking about? It's hard being creative, man. It's, it's not, it's not an easy thing. Uh, the script, I'm writing the script with a buddy of mine and just the idea of like literally making nothing out, like something out of nothing is one of the most insane. And also we're running into the problem of like, oh, that's been done before. Oh, that's been done before. Ah, oh, that's been done before, especially nowadays. Like, what is Very, original? I, dude, it's tough. And then, yeah, and then it's funny because the original thing, I mean, doesn't always work. And then you're like, oh, Spider-Man 45's out. And then you're like, what the fuck is going on? Dude, how funny would it be if I just went home right now, stole one of your ideas and posted it? <laughs> you, me and that girl would show up at your next episode <laughs> with a, another army of... <laughs> fans Dude, what if i keep doing it you're like oh that was funny the first one's funny then i keep doing it and they're getting more views and i'm like and i just message you keep them coming <laughs> hey keep when's them- the next one i gotta post tomorrow <laughs> 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 
What if somebody actually did DM me like, dude, I post on Mondays. Why haven't you put it out yet? I'm just in the shop like, sorry, I'm almost done. And I just send it to them. I don't even post it anymore. I'm going to your stand-up show with a notepad. In the front row. Hey, can you repeat that? I didn't hear you were talking fast. I go, I said. Dude, just ruined. Oh, fuck. Oh, that makes that's me literally, laugh so hard. Dude, people, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's basically what happens. That's making me laugh too much, man. It's making me angry. <laughs> You're going to leave here so TikTok upset. TikTok anger. TikTok anger. It's true. It should be your merch, your next merch. Dude, I swear to God, they need to come out. Me and uh, my girl, and we're, we're like, they need to do a documentary, though kind of high like this is like this the stealing culture with with comedy of all things because everybody wants to be famous but it's the most like disrespected thing on earth as far as like nobody wants to actually try to be funny they just want to like use something you know copy shit this and the other but i'm like it's kind of getting out of hand and i'm like i would love you ever see seven days to air the south park documentary yeah i mean i love I wanna, that i want to do like that but with like my reels where you're like you see me fucking angry you see me like writing ideas down you see me filming things i never put out and you're like oh there's stuff that goes into this you should do that it's just like a, right now my job it's a lot i we, oh, yeah, yeah we would like to do it um yeah i don't know i think it would be interesting to see like a vloggy type you know mini thing about just how much shit goes into this and how you post it and you're watching it you're you know you then you're freaking out about the views and uh i don't know i think it'd be really good i think it would be interesting because a lot of people i feel frustrated with this kind of situation so i think it would be a great look at it too and maybe and then posting it on tiktok and other social media platforms so people kind of see all the work that goes into them and maybe hopefully one of these assholes kind of no i don't think they would change their ways no, I was I was being no. optimistic there. No, they would. I mean, it would be good. I mean, in that documentary, though, I would one thousand percent throw those people under the bus. Do I it. would. I would be like, these are the f- these people you follow. Come to my page to take my shit and then redo it. Do so, it. I was gonna call it real problems, like as reels. That's all the time we got today. Hey, I'm Mike Lenoche. I actually Chase. like I actually like that real problems. Something like that. Then real would, talk, real street. But it's then real, that, that no, would that kind of make sense. That would kind of you know not really include TikTok. But I I don't know. Regardless what it is, it would be me throwing shade to and being like fuck these accounts. Like if I was a bigger account, I don't think I would care as much. To mm-hmm. be perfect, if I had a million followers, I'd be like it's expected. But when you see it the other way around, you're like, hey. well, I don't get it when real comedians steal people's material, like other comedians' material Dude. on stage. That to me is one of the most insane things. I don't Ever. think they know they're stealing. I know I, I know a comic, and I have inklings of certain people, and you watch them. You see how they generate material, and I remember vividly this kid I used to be friends with. He'd always show me a Brian Regan joke. Dude, this is my favorite joke. Watch it. It was a joke about how Brian Regan says, I can't wait till they invent an ironing board that when you open it, it doesn't, and then he starts screeching really loud, like, yeah. like this really loud, obnoxious act out. Fucking love this is my favorite joke. Months later, he comes out with a joke. That is basically he took the structure of that. I can't wait till they. Uh, I can't wait till blank. They, there's a day where blank stops. Blah blah blah, and it's basically the same beat, the same building up to where I can't wait till when you go to a hotel and they stop knocking the door and it sounds like. Ah, and I'm like, you stole the fucking structure. You do, like you yeah. didn't. You see that a lot, like a very lot. Where in him in particular, I was like, there's like five instances where I'm like, I saw somebody do a joke. And then I see his joke and I go, I know what you did. And I go, you're a piece of shit. And no one will ever pick up on it because it's so – it's masked enough where you have to see them back to back. And But then you go down this road of like, well, did he – because a lot of comics, though, generally our brains develop ideas the same way. You look for the misdirection and it's inevitable that you're going to think – you're going to develop an idea kind of similar. It's kind of crazy. It sounds like – insanely odd but it actually happens more times than none but then you see some people are like even a, i know a kid i was like i was watching he was like watching a comic set and the comic was talking about like trans athletes and then he writes down his idea about trans athletes and i'm like even you're not even mining the topic in a in an original way you're like using them as a, a springboard to kind of get into the topic and shit you see comics where they'll 
the last comics joke, they'll kind of go on stage and riff about the previous comics end joke to kind of get going just to kind of like have familiarity. And then their riff becomes a joke and you're like, what are you doing? Like, it's weird. I, I think like, I really think it's a bad thing to be like very righteous because there's so many fucking people who are willing to do that little shady thing. And I know it sounds like bitter and jaded, but I'm like, I, I'm just like, I've seen it enough where I'm like, Ooh, boy, like mm. happens more than you'd like to know. And then you're like, how often does it happen that I don't even know? Well, what was it? When we were in high school, Zeke, we stole, we, 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 we would copy a lot of jokes. I feel like in our theater classes and everything like that. Yeah. And eventually, yeah, well, yeah, recycling is one thing, but then we'd eventually be like, hey, I, I'm just stealing another person's joke from, like, last year, which yeah, doesn't. It's bizarre. I realized that wasn't okay whenever I did that with the improv camp my first year, which was, like, in ninth grade. Though and I was like. You're quoting Ace Ventura. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would literally watch the jokes that were being made in the sessions beforehand like it was oh. a morning improv camp and then an afternoon camp and then i would just watch the morning camp and go oh that's good oh that's and good just that. and just do that because i'm a ninth grader you know i'm like that's 12 problem, years though. old do you, i'm 12 years old i don't know yeah. and then i'd go out there and do it and then all of a sudden one day it's like oh wow we sam got a lot funnier and then our drama teacher at the time goes no he was just stealing the jokes from the morning class and i'm like oh but i guess it, I, I okay i mean but that's that that's what i think a lot of the internet is where it's like they just don't know. You're like, dude, they don't know. They think, and, the, and that's what's shame on TikTok and Instagram where they're like, it's a challenge or it's a trend. You're like, bitch, that's my idea. What the fuck are you like promoting? Yeah. Because they look at it like, oh, nice. These people are generating this such a good idea that it's sparking hundreds of thousands of videos and it's getting us more money. So the, so the TikTok and Instagram kind of turn a blind eye to it. I'm like, Oh, it's right. fucking convenient. I go, so somebody can use my audio, and I have no control over those videos, but if I use fucking Freebird, I get almost banned and kicked off the app because they don't like it. You're like, well, you really pick and choose who you uh, stand up for in this whole mess. But, I wonder if there's legal precedence for that. Peyton, get on it. I mean, it's I, I've actually had people – I've had people – take my my video actually and post it on their page and not like meme pages where they take my video share it to their page and not credit me and the beauty is i can actually go on and do a copyright claim and oh when the second that hits they get a, a message and if they get three their account gets shut down and i know the second they see it because they within a minute later they're like i'm sorry i didn't know i'm like you did though you're just a douchebag I go, you have a hundred, hundreds and five hundred or a million followers. You didn't think I wanted to get tagged, you fucking asshole. And then they're like, can you undo it? And I'm like, no. I go, just don't be a douchebag. And That's then, insane. It's crazy. I know I stole it, but can you just don't reprimand I'm me? I'm sorry. <laughs> and I go, I, oh, I'm like, dude, fucking do it again, bro. I mean, it's like, but. There's this, it's like, and then, and then aside from all this anger and people say, and then you, then you like kind of go back you're like i'd have to make a video and be funny yeah there's so much you can these roads you can get carried down if you're not conscious of just stay on your path and be funny and make the videos there you go so but it's very easy to trail off there's like a it's like it's not a fork in the road there's like a fucking delta remember the term delta <laughs> fucking a million roads and you're like what the there fuck? which one is mine again because i'm pretty pissed off at that guy right now i can tell you're pissed off I I'm passionate. I've I've learned yeah. it's the, the anger slowly subsiding. But man, when that first happened, and it was the kid that I knew, and I was like, oh. And I watched again my style that I developed. He basically just took my kind of like how I act out inanimate things in a very specific way. He basically just did that, and a couple ideas were like verbatim of mine. And I had to watch his because he has a lot of followers. I had to basically watch the style I created just go and just take off and i was just like he gained like hundreds of thousands of followers and you're like and i hit him up i'm like dude what are you doing i was like and i was very polite i'm like again i i know you like my videos you've told me you've commented on them i was like i just feel like mine are inspiring yours like too much i go i, I watch yours i see mine oh i'll be more fraudulent of the idea i go it's not the idea 
It's how you're developing it is Wait, exactly. Hey, I'll be more fraudulent. I'll, I'll be more vigilant. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, that was holy funny. shit. He That's a guy. That's a guy who goes. I'm gonna keep. Doing yeah. Okay. It. Well, I'll try to be more fraudulent. No, fuckhead. I'm sorry. He'll be. He'll, I'll be. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, I will keep doing it in a more aggressive way. Uh, and I'm like, oh. I'm now Matt. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm now Matt. Uh, Dude, that would be the most insane What if he goes, I'm time. you now. And I'm just like, you can't be me. And I'm like, and then he goes, takes his mask off. I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. I am you now. When n- next time I'm mad at you, Peyton, I'm going to do that. I'm mute for today. Hey, man. This was fun. It was great. Thank you. We'll be back whenever Village Podcast is back or something. You're more than welcome to come back. When TBD. That... I don't think it's coming back. I don't mm, know. Maybe. It's just tough. I, I mean, I, I just to close on that, I think our personalities, like, I'm very, I did my own solo podcast. He did his own solo podcast. I'm just fucking around. I didn't mean it like a no, serious I, thing. No, I, I mean, realistically, like, unless it was like a produced thing and we had, it was approached very differently. It's like, it was a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of work. It's too much. It's a lot of work. But hey, I had fun. And if you guys want to check it out, uh, it's Village Idiots. And then your podcast, where can they find it? And what's it called? Maddie Chimber Podcast, Apple, Spotify, YouTube. OnlyFans. OnlyFans. uh, Roku. Brazzers. Brazzers, Roku. Roku Plus. Uh, But check out my Instagram, TikTok, at Maddie Chimber. Feel free to take a video of your liking. I'd recommend the ones that do well. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> play us out Peyton hey thanks for listening guys um, always remember uh, to hit that subscribe button always remember that well, isn't that the worst wow, way to so, phrase that that was so fra- good this is your best a, one yet uh, hit one of the buttons near the oh, come on thing now. that has the bell because oh. then you'll get a bell delivered to your home mm-hmm. and then um, uh, comment yep. hit the like button not the dislike Unless you dislike the video. Mm -hmm. Always remember, listen, think, talk. Bye.